Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Ridgeway's Bar and Restaurant here in Hong Kong Island. I'm Ed Pixon for Vintage Sports, and with me is Mark Wilson. And the air is filled with tension and excitement here at Ridgeway's because tonight we're going to have the start of a one-of-a-kind match and a very interesting one of that between two of the world's best Coup, uh, rather Q wielders in the persons of Efren Reyes of the Philippines and Earl Strickland of the United States of America. Efren Reyes is known as the magician, he's a finesse player, while Earl Strickland has been known as the million dollar man, he is a power player. Now Mark, uh, given uh, those uh, particular uh, descriptions of these two players, to whose advantage would it be uh, in this uh, kind of a format? Well, uh, sometimes the uh, conservative player, the one that doesn't make any unforced turnovers, uh, has a little bit of an edge in a high-tension match. Would you say that these contrasting styles of uh, Efren and Earl would make for a very exciting match? Oh, definitely. This is the feature match, and the whole world has been looking forward to this match. Well, as Mark said, the whole world has been lo looking forward to this match. I'm sure you are, too. So without further ado, we'll have this match rolling soon after we come back after this commercial break. Okay, great. Everybody's here. Everybody's excited. We're ready to go. I know I flew a bunch of miles to get here to see this match. And uh, I'd like to welcome everybody here, my friends, the pool fans, the uh, media, the host, and the players. My name is Mark Wilson, and on behalf of uh, the most gracious, spontaneous host pool has ever known, Mr. Bob Moore, uh, I've been asked to host this. Uh, we're proud to present the clash between the two most dynamic nine ball players the game has ever known. This is the third in the series of major nine ball events sponsored by Ridgeways here in Hong Kong. And uh, in March, we will have the World Cup tournament here. And this is a prelude. And we hope this propels the sport into a, a new era of uh, high profile pool matches. The pool player gossip grapevine is absolutely a buzz with the thought of this match taking place. And let me tell you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, make no mistake, this match is a uh, much talked about thing worldwide and especially throughout the US. We all owe a debt of sincere gratitude to Mr. Bob Moore for uh, his uh, sponsorship of this and bringing pool to the forefront in all sport. There will not be a loser here uh, Saturday night. Uh, everybody's going to win. The players win, the sport wins, and uh, all of us spectators are going to enjoy this quite a bit too. The format of the match will be we're going to play a race to 35 games today. And this is a lengthy match. Tomorrow when they come back, they're going to go to 70 games. So from whatever the score that we have today, the score will carry over, it'll be cumulative, and the uh, Saturday finals will be 50 games, so that the final total score of the games needed to win this match will be 120 games. The prize will be $100,000 US, winner take all. At 9.30, we're gonna have a break where we're gonna have some snacks and food and everybody can stretch their legs a bit. And as a courtesy to the players, I ask that everybody please click off their beeper as well as their mobile phones. To aid in the electric atmosphere that we have tonight, I request that everybody applause a game-winning uh, shot, a great shot, a terrific safety, and acknowledge the players to keep their momentum high. Tonight we have two of the universally regarded premier nine ball players ever to chalk a cue. Competitor number one holds five world championship titles. He recently won $1 million for running 10 consecutive racks in a tournament match. Let's please welcome the offensive juggernaut, Earl Strickland. Competitor number two hails from Manila in the Philippines. Always regarded as the player to beat 
in any tournament or match. Virtually no one has ever beaten him over an extended match. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Efren Reyes. Thank you, and let's get started. Could we please have Bob Moore come up and congratulate each of the players and wish them good luck? challenge is underway. Uh, you just saw the lag. Our third man is Mr. Neil Martin. He'll be refereeing this nine ball challenge. And Mark, you were mentioning uh, during your live intro that the atmosphere here at Richways is certainly very electric. Everybody's anticipating a great match. Well, we have Efren set the break the first rack, the opening rack. Top lock for Efren. Cue ball went into the uh, side pocket. So, yes, oftentimes in the first rack of a match, when you're a little bit nervous, it's uh, maybe a good idea to take just a little bit off your power on the break to make sure that you don't let the cue ball get away. The uh, scratch at this level on the break is a 90% loss. Yes. Well, given the level of competition here and the level of talent we've got, uh, certainly. Uh, that advantage of uh, winning the lag has been lost to, to Efren Reyes. And the position of the uh, ball certainly looks like it's not going to be a difficult task for Earl Strickland to finish this one off. Well, his opening shot left a lot to be desired. He uh, failed to draw the ball, and it looks like Efren may get yet another crack at this game. Now, this is what Efren has to do to win this match. Uh, he needs to be able to create things from nothing. And uh, here he has a, a, he's given a shot that he has to kick at the ball, which is one of the facets of his game that he does very well. And if he can turn shots like this around, that's what he needs to do to win this match. He's made a nice hit. Okay. Well, Efren Reyes did not get dubbed as the magician for nothing. And the, one of the strong facets of his game, I believe, is his ability to position the ball well. Not only offensively, but defensively. And Correct. He, he kicks to the right side of the ball for favorable things to turn out. Now, Earl's opened up the, uh, his inning with a terrific shot. He had to play a carom shot with a little bit of draw and just an absolute terrific shot. Oh, this is where he wants to be. He's eyeing up the shot as though he may be slightly hooked on the corner. Uh, made a great shot. Yeah. You know, I was talking to Efren earlier, and he was saying that uh, Earl Strickland might have a slight advantage uh, with the, the the bigger pockets that uh, he perceives uh, is what they're playing at this juncture. Would you say that uh, 
that's an accurate statement? Well, uh, I think it lends itself to Earl's type of offensive game and uh, maybe deprives Zephyrin a little bit of his top quality safety play. Uh, but uh, the match is long enough that uh, the winner of this match is going to be the best player. Well, remember, ladies and gentlemen, we were on the uh, first day of a three-day haul, and we are going to be playing uh, a race to 35 tonight. Tomorrow, another 35 to make it 70. And a total of 120, so 50, a race to 50 on the third night. So Mr. Strickland has won the first game. <laughs> well, right off, Mark, uh, it seems that uh, we've already seen uh, quite uh, an intense uh, level of play as far as uh, these two gentlemen are concerned. Certainly not uh, at this point, we can't say that we have already seen the character of this uh, competition. We, ought, we uh, expect to see a lot more. But that's the beauty of the length of the match. Uh, it gives each player a chance to get loose and then to overcome or offset some early mistakes and get settled in and uh, kind of learn the table as it plays in competition. Uh, Practicing is one thing, but actually competing is quite a different. A lot has been said about the ability of uh, Earl Strickland to uh, break very well. We'll see that. Uh, we'll see a, a glimpse of what he can do as we start the second game. What seems to be the problem? Well, right uh, Earl is a very uh, touchy fellow, and he's uh, worried that maybe the ball isn't clean, so uh, he's asking the referee to clean the balls. Now, he possesses an absolute dynamite break, and in this area, we think that he has a slight edge. As you could hear, that was a crushing break, and I would estimate that to be in the vicinity of 28 miles an hour. And you can see his cue ball control was pretty good. This comes from the fact that he trains so darn hard. Uh, he really practices, and, and this is this requires the same level of attention that a tee shot would for a golfer. You just don't go out and hit 18 of them in uh, one day and uh, say you got your tee shot down. You got to go out and hit buckets of balls. Well, this guy trains for the break the same way. You were telling me earlier. Uh, that Earl Strickland takes this uh, game very seriously, not just as a matter of a, a game that you play. He brings it up to a level of, a, of an intense sport. Right. He treats it as a sport. Uh, he exercises daily, and uh, he's pushed out to a jump shot, which happens to be his absolute forte. And the way he's pushed out, I think Efren's going to have to kick at it because uh, his skills at the jump shot is not nearly as defined as what uh, Earl's brought his jump shot up to. So what does Efren Reyes want to do at this juncture? Well, he's just, he's declined the shot, so we're going to get to see a patented jump shot by Earl Strickland, and uh, I would venture to say that you will see this ball made. Well, brace up, folks. I hope we have good insurance over here from the angle. <laughs> I'll deflect it for you. Well, my first prediction of the day is <laughs> not looking too good. Well, as we said, uh, this is a winner-take-all $100,000 challenge, ladies and gentlemen. You can imagine the attention that uh, the prize brings to a player who especially is faced with a difficult shot as that. Well, as we said, uh, they'll probably loosen up in, in due time. Oh, yeah. And uh, let me tell you that uh, while the money's nice, the pride value here is uh, far greater. If they were playing for nothing, they'd be playing just as hard because these guys are that type of geared-up competitors that don't like to lose at anything, whether it be chess or pool or golf. You've mentioned golf a couple of times. You know, when uh, Team America came to the Philippines a couple of years back, I learned that most of the uh, uh, pool players from the States play a lot of golf. Why is that? Well, the games are uh, very similar. It's a stroke and a swing, and uh, you try to take a slow backswing just like you would in the uh, pool. And uh, so the in the touch, you know, the, around the greens, the uh, pool players tend to be pretty good in their short games. 
Seems to me you've been, had your time in the fairways. No, uh, I don't. I, I'm oh. trying to perfect my pool skills. I still haven't quite gotten them up there where I'd like them to be. <laughs> well, this gentleman certainly, Efren Reyes, has had a lot of time to perfect his uh, skill at this game. Started off very young. Practically lived in the billiard centers in Manila. Takes game number two, so we're at even Steven. You know, we're going to go to 120 games for the winner, and there's there's the potential for 239 racks to be played. It could be 119, 119 at some point, and uh, you know, uh, as evenly matched as these two titans are, I wouldn't be surprised to see it come down to just within a couple frames of each other. So a lot of composure will also come into play here. Yeah, endurance would be a big factor. Efren's hit his second break much better. You notice how the cue ball died, and that reveals that all the energy from the cue ball was passed into the rack. And you can see the results are pretty good. Now his opening shot, he has to deal with the nine ball a little bit, and this makes this shot that much tougher. It's just a matter of making the ball. I would see no problem. And as you can see, he held that uh, problem with uh, absolute ease and this comes from all the years of rotation play where you're perpetually Correct. always playing off other balls it's a basic game that uh, Filipinos play and that is where uh, Efren has honed his skills in the billiard halls of uh, Manila and the Philippines one thing with Efren he plays with no emotion at all got his nerves in check. And he just goes about his business. He's going to put away this game very easily. Yes. Bradford Reyes puts away game number three and takes a one game lead of two to one. I'd like to remind you again that uh, on the first night we are going to be playing a race to 35 and then tomorrow go up to 70 games a total of 120 so the third night will be will feature a race to 50. Well we're blessed with two very fast players and uh, uh, Efren plays at a real good pace and then Earl plays lightning fast by comparison. What a wonderful break that oh, yes. was. He had the cue ball absolutely stopped until it was kissed. And he's obtained a shot. This is a little bit testy. Even though the two ball is fairly close to the pocket, he has to cut it down a rail and use a little bit of speed, and that makes that pocket that less forgiving. Let's see how it fares here. Well, he, he didn't hit it perfect. You can see he hit just a little bit heavy, and he lost enough of the momentum on the cue ball that uh, he may be forced into a safety position now. He can hit the ball. I'm just not sure if it passes by the six. So. Oh, terrific shot. Well, shot. <laughs> Who makes it go so easy? concentration for her head. Nothing's ever easy, nor can it be taken for granted. And it's a very easy, it's a human nature to be a little bit lazy. You make a couple tough shots and then you want to coast for a shot. And as soon as you let up just slightly, you'll miss. So concentration is a big factor here. We've got a very appreciative crowd here at Ridgeways who certainly knows their pool. The Reyes lead for two games to one. I think that's three games to one. He broke oh, three games to one. Yeah. So he's got out in the break a couple quick times here. And uh, I guess uh, we've elaborated about Earl's offense. I guess we can see that uh, you don't get to be Efren Reyes by being a slouch offensively oh, yeah. either. <laughs> well, Efren knows how to capitalize on an advantage. 
but as uh, Mark Wilson pointed out, one small mistake can do it in, in this kind of a format. A lot of people say Efren is more comfortable with the uh, eight ball uh, format. Is that true? Well, he's had good success in that, but uh, I don't think so. I, I think some of the times he had trouble winning tournaments for a while, but it wasn't through lack of skill. It's that the players are so good that, and the matches are short enough that he doesn't have time to allow his skills to override a few uh, fortunate shots. So... Uh, Efren's come through with three quick racks, and now he was forced into a real tough position where he had to bank a ball, and he took a risky shot, and it didn't turn out. And Earl steps to the table and makes a terrific shot. You know, always that first shot of any inning is ultra important to establish yourself at the table, to establish control of the table. Even if you don't get ideal position as a player, you need to make that ball, and then maybe if you have to play safe on the preceding shot, so be it. What do you think is Earl faced with now, Mark? Well, he's got to deal with this 8-9, and uh, it's, it's not an easy situation with the 7 ball straight across the table on the rail. So what would he want to do at this juncture after the 7? Uh, it looks like he may be able to play a carom shot, but if he can get the cue ball all the way across the table, he can just tick the eight and pocket the nine on the following shot. That's exactly what he did. Got it across the table. He's looking at it. And absolutely no problem. <laughs> Yes, Martin. One of the keys for Efren to win this match is that uh, he doesn't want to have very many turnovers, unforced errors, if he can limit it. Because once Earl gets his offense going and his momentum going, he really he really feels feels uh, he he feeds off of that. Look at this shot. He made it look awful easy. Yeah. But the important thing was he got it to where he wanted it uh, for that uh, last put away. He played some very nice position to get the proper angle on that so that he could make it look easy. How many, of, how many hours of practice does Earl put in? Well, uh, in preparation for this, uh, and I know this not from him because he kind of likes to lead people to believe that he doesn't play, but his wife revealed to me that he'd been practicing in the house eight and a half hours per day. Wow. And uh, I'm here to tell you, he takes this match very serious. I know since we've arrived in town, he's either slept or been hitting balls in preparation for this. Serious. Another dynamic break, and uh, you can see the cue ball had a little side spin on it, and he still got that much power into it. Normally, when you leave spin on the cue ball, that's an indicator of less than maximum power into the rack. Uh, I wouldn't be a bit surprised to see him play a safety. We try to put the cue ball below the two. One ball in the end rail. Oh. He's uh, executed it flawlessly. Perfect shot there by Earl Strickland. And these are just the very situations that Efren needs to turn around in order to win this match. Well, he's been known to do that a few times in his career. An absolute fantastic shot, and uh, another byproduct of rotation play. You know, you're forced to kick up balls like that, and he's an absolute expert. Now, I wouldn't be surprised to see Earl try to put the cue ball back where the cue ball had just left for Earl, right be or Efren, right below the two ball again. Yeah, that's where he puts it. <laughs> Life isn't very easy for Efren these days. No, uh, he's really got it buried in there this time, and. Uh, Efren's going to have to really pull a rabbit out of his hat even to hit this ball. He's going to have to create some angles that just aren't there right now by uh, using massive spin. Hitting downward with a problem with the stream low and a little bit left. And he warped the cue ball. By that, I mean he changed the angle off the rail, but just not quite enough. Well, Earl certainly is putting uh, the skills of Efren Reyes to a big test at this point. Efren, though, is leading the match three games to two. <laughs> Earl 
Eagles made a real nice four rail position shot. He had to use, took quite a bit of power and he laid it in there just nice. That says a lot for a player who's known as a, a, a power uh, player that he can lay back on a shot when, he, when it needs to be laid back. Well, he had a tough position there and he made a good shot, but I'm not sure that he's going to be rewarded. Yeah, he's hit perfect. Shot. He hit it perfectly. No problems here to pick up his uh, third game. Third time. Now three games of peace. Earl Strickland just put away his third game. So it's three all between Earl Strickland and Efren Reyes. I think you can already sense the electricity run through both these players. You can see Earl, he stalks the table like a lion when yeah. he comes up there. He's very aggressive and uh, outgoing, and, and it matches his whole playing style as well as uh, flamboyant. And he can be a pretty intimidating presence. Yes, he can. <laughs> With his break, his power break, and. Uh, uh, and he, he makes no bones about it. He tells it the way he feels it. And he's a very emotional player. And so uh, he wears his heart right on his sleeve. Like you said with Efren, you can't always tell how he's feeling. Yeah. The, you can't tell the match score or anything by his demeanor. Earl, you definitely can. He's hit the break pretty good. And uh, he really wasn't rewarded. It was just that he hit it so hard that something finally came over and knocked another ball into the side pocket. We're playing this match, ladies and gentlemen, at Ridgeway's Bar and Restaurant in Hong Kong. They've dubbed it as the color of money. Nine ball challenge between two top caliber pool players. Oh. see Earl reacting to Yeah, I think he uh, was uh, slightly distracted from a crowd member, and uh, we are in pretty close quarters here for a competition of this nature. However, both the players are aware of it, and that, uh, I'm sure that uh, distraction will go both ways. Efren Bata is a, a real tactician of the game. If you notice, he achieves a lot of very nice angles so that you'll just see him use soft spin shots as opposed to the power game. He has the power game. He just chooses not to use it all the time, and it's a little more efficient for him to play that way. A very controlled uh, manner of playing has characterized the career of uh, Efren Reyes. Well, in the Philippines, he is known as Bata, which means young. But by no means is he the younger of this, uh, <laughs> these two competitors. No, but still at heart, I think he might no, be. He <laughs> Efren is actually 42 years old. Earl is 35. But that's not to say he's giving away anything in those terms. You know, in the career of a pool player, uh, a little maturity seems to help them because it's such a difficult game that experience really weighs in. And experience in matches like this, it would be hard to find anybody that's had more than these two players oh, in uh, high-tension matches. Well, you're a player who plays in a high level of competition, uh, Mark. The, the concentration that is needed for uh, a match like this certainly can take a lot out of you, especially oh. in a three-day haul. Absolutely. It's not the physical exertion of walking around hitting these balls. If you didn't tie in the mental part of it, you could do it for days and never get fatigued. But once you put total concentration into every shot, every rack of every game, 
let me assure you, you're going to be tired. And uh, so much so that pro players practicing by themselves can only do it for sustain the intensity uh, for maximum play for about an hour by themselves. And they do it every day and train that way. Now, Efren's made a nice break here. He now leads in the match, four games to three. And he's going to have to do something with the cue ball to break out the three from the eight. That's a real problem. And he can take a little gamble here because even if he doesn't get the breakout, he should obtain some type of a safety play on the ball. Now he has a real easy safety uh, sitting there for him. And uh, I think we're going to see him play it. He's going to try to move the cue ball just two inches ahead to stick it to the eight. Now he had an opening for the pocket. Effort went for it. Now he's got a little something to deal with here. He, he'd like to use a high right hand spin, but the seven ball looms large there if he wants to get close to the five. So I think we'll see him lay off the speed a little bit. No, he's wound up and he's going to attack the seven ball. And I think this is going to be one gamble that didn't pay off. That's not what he wanted to do. Now, he, he knew it. He recognized the seven was there, and he thought he could hit it hard enough to get onto the other side of it. But uh, those balls, they have a way of uh, getting right in your way, I mm -hmm. think, in these matches. For anybody that's played any kind of amount of pool, they know. That's what makes it so challenging. For people who play it for fun and leisure, That's what, this is why uh, these gentlemen are pros. See a three rail kick. No, he's taking an intentional foul. And while it appears that it turned out good, it's, it's mm -hmm. not going to be favorable. It, it, Earl's going to have to return a safety here, I believe. And uh, he's going to really be in a bad way. Or Earl may play the combination. Terrific shot. Another great shot. That works bad again. At this point, Mark, would you say that uh, these two players have already gotten going as far as their games are concerned? No, I don't think so. I think they're still feeling each other out a little bit and uh, getting used to the table. <clears throat> and uh, they, they're both, you're seeing a pretty high standard to play, but by no means they're absolute top speed. Mm -hmm. Well, so far, neither player has been able to break away. As you can see, our score is tied at uh, four games apiece. But neither player would want to fall back uh, too much in this particular game uh, match. Now there you see the result of breaking from the side. It sends that one ball side pocketward. And this is quite an advantage. If uh, Earl could have obtained the shot off the break, he would have had a pretty good chance to run these balls out. Unfortunately, the four has impeded his shot to the two. And... Uh, we're either looking at a push-out situation or a safety. If, if the safety is possible, I'm sure he'll uh, take that because a push-out situation is never palatable for the person pushing out. It's always to the uh, incoming player's advantage. Push. He's going to have to push out. Just call it for a push. Yeah, you can even hear the sigh in his voice. He, <laughs> he hated to have to do this. Sometimes you'll even see some of these players kick at balls when they don't, they're not forced to, just because the uh, turnaround of a uh, push-out is never to your advantage. And I think this was a good decision on Efren's part to turn the table over. Even if he obtains a safety from here, it'll be a terrific shot, and uh, by no means is it likely that he'll be able to snooker Efren in addition to play safe. These players have shown a lot of finesse. Let's see what uh, Earl Strickland comes up with. Ultra soft speed. 
And he made a terrific shot just to have uh, what happened occur, but uh, I'm not sure just what he's left after. It's hard to tell from our angles, yeah. but I, I'm certain that Efren can hit the ball. I'm just not certain. Uh, I know that the six is off the rail. I'm not certain what he can do to possibly make an offensive or defensive shot from here. Well, Efren shook his head a bit and is looking intently at the table. I tell you, he makes very fast decisions. Yes, and uh, once again, a good decision. There was no way uh, safety was going to turn around the game for him. So he had to take a little offensive opportunity there and uh, possibly risk losing the game. But consequently, the reward is uh, a game-winning shot that he, he turned out there. Well, probably the measure of a good pool player is to be able to make the decision when to gamble or when to play it safe. Absolutely. Yeah, you can't always play conservative in this game. There's times when you have to take a little chance and you have to weigh the risk, risk and reward. But in order to make intelligent decisions, you have to be so terribly experienced oh, yeah. that uh, if you're not 40 years old, you're not going to have a glimmer of hope of beating one of these gentlemen. Oh, yeah. said earlier that uh, Efren is always the player to beat. What makes him so? Well, uh, his background in rotation, and then he's uh, an excellent tactician. He's absolutely fearless. He uh, uh, doesn't regard his opponent uh, so much as the game. He just plays the game, and he plays it so well. He's actually innovated. Here's a slow motion of Efren's last combination shot. But uh, he's known as the innovator of the kick safety in the United States. And uh, it's just one of the skills that he has of uh, immense stature in worldwide. I was uh, having dinner with Efren earlier today, and I asked him sometimes at tournaments, I kid with him a little bit. And uh, mm -hmm. I'll say, now you got a tough match tomorrow. And you'll look at me and say, no, I win already. <laughs> and uh, at That's first, the attitude. I didn't know what he meant. And, and, He's absolutely a non-egotistical guy. But oh, yeah. he just he's just stating a fact that he knows that he's gonna win that match. So I asked him today, I looked at him and said, Efren, you win already? And he said, No, very tough. <laughs> <laughs> well, Efren is a man of few words, but uh, he does his talking on the pool table. Yeah, he does his lets his cute do the talking yeah. and uh, it's a pretty powerful statement. What's Earl looking at now, Mark? Well, uh, he doesn't have much of a shot here. I think he's looking at playing playing this ball rail first, maybe for a safety. <coughs> now he was playing it rail first. And, uh, he wasn't playing for a safety. He was playing for the win. Yeah. And he was going to try to make the ball. These are the situations where one has to take full control and advantage, take advantage of well, such the, an occasion. Due to the location of the balls, this would be one of the racks that falls into about the 10 percent area where I think that uh, it's very difficult to run these balls out there. There's a lot of things that can go wrong with it, so I'm not certain that we're going to see a run out here. No, he hit nice speed. But uh, just a little bit off, and now he's forced to kick and maybe a uh, uh, costly turnover of the table. We have a pickle here that uh, Efren got himself in. He's located on our side of the seven ball, and two balls just on the other side, about one diamond away. He's forced to kick to the long rail down here. Now, dead center queuing is generally preferred for this. He made a nice try. And uh, to make matters worse, he even moved the four into a more mm -hmm. ideal location for Earl. For so Earl, yes. I would venture to say we'll see a win from this ball in hand. <coughs> As he said, Earl can get very aggressive and gets so excited with the the situations like this. Well, 
when he's playing his best, he has a uh, two practice swing and go method, and it works quite well. When he's comfortable at the table, it's just a two stroke and go, and uh, when he gets in that rhythm, he can beat anybody. I guess it's really, really important to establish that sort of a, a, a setup just before you go. Yeah, the, the pause uh, right before you shoot when you double check it. And what, what sets the pro players apart from the amateurs is that they really are careful with their cueing. They make sure where that tip and the opposite ball are aligned right before they shoot, and then it's a slow backswing and straight through. Follow through being a critical facet of that as well. If you notice where the cue ball rests and where these players' tip ends up, you will see the tip is roughly four to six inches beyond where the cue ball was, where that tip stays in contact with the cue ball, allowing it to apply spin and accuracy both. That really sounds like uh, you were describing golf. Well, the golf uh, stroke. it is a very similar uh, swing. Many of the amateurs, they, they hit to the cue ball and not through the cue ball. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the crucial things for anybody out there that's uh, watching this would like to get better at the game, make sure they always swing smoothly through the cue ball. Good follow through, just like that. Now on these breaks, these power breaks, you really see a, a, a protracted follow through that you wouldn't use on the other shot. And uh, it's just like with a golf swing, as we were talking, it's a longer swing to get more tip speed up, and that translates to more power. But maintaining that long swing with accuracy, that's the hardest thing to do in all sport. The crowd is certainly enjoying the level of play that uh, we're witnessing here. None more than the uh, promoter of this match, uh, Mr. Bob Moore of uh, Ridgeways. He's yeah. certainly been very upbeat about this. And uh, I think I might also be guilty of enjoying this quite a bit. <laughs> that makes two of us. Yeah, I would have flown here to watch this no matter what. And I'm uh, really thrilled to work with you, have the opportunity to work with you, and to be part of this is a tremendous honor for me. It's an immense pleasure to be here, Mike. And I tell you, uh, just uh, reading about it uh, in the papers, you know, in, in the Philippines, uh, this is very highly publicized, and uh, a lot of people were, just before we left were telling me to uh, memorize everything that happens and tell them all about it. Lucky for us, we've got vintage sports covering this, so I don't have to do that. You just can't believe the amount of volume of uh, talk about this in the United States. Now, this match was, uh, it's only come about in the last four or five days, and I happened to be at a tournament in St. Louis where there was 50 players, mm -hmm. and when they found out that I was coming here, every one of them had a little input, and I know each one of them went back to his uh, city that he resides in went to his local pool room, and I know that this has got to be the hottest gossip in the oh, United yeah. States is what's going on in this room right here. And let me tell you, there's literally thousands of pool players that would dream of attending this event. Well, I know for a fact that uh, a lot of uh, media people around Hong Kong uh, that represent international news agencies have come over to witness this match and record it for uh, the people around the world. Now, Earl's a very temperamental player, and uh, he just took a moment to instruct the referee how he wants things done, and uh, he does. He, he likes to be that precise. That's the way he conducts yeah. himself, and, uh, and I think it has something to do with the high level of play that he can obtain. And you oh. can see by his reaction how intense a player Earl Strickland is. Well, he hasn't been blessed with much fortune off the break. He's had a couple of crushing breaks, made balls on the break, stopped the cue ball on the break, and just not been lucky enough to obtain a good opening shot. And we're going to see a mass ace right. Oh, and he hit a terrific shot. He hit a terrific shot. He was just not rewarded once again. And he really hasn't been the beneficiary of much of the luck so far. We can't quite see the scoreboard here. We kept track, uh, Mike. Ed, I saw you marking the score, so I thought I would uh, I, pass it on, and we got excited I here. I started doing that and then just got caught up in the game. <laughs> the 
you know when you talk about the score, there's not going to be any losers at this match. Everybody, the both players are going to end up winning by just being a participant. I know both of them look forward to participating, and the entire sport and all the billiard world wins at this event. Well, certainly the awareness of being created by this match will certainly reward the sport. Effort made a nice position shot there, and uh, it looks like it should not be a problem for him to take care of the remaining five balls on the table. He hits the pocket so nicely, and Wall just gets there with just enough speed to go in the pocket cleanly. Even if he hits one slightly errantly at that speed, the pockets are very forgiving. Mm -hmm. When you hit them hard, the pocket size is actually reduced. And he has uh, two relatively easy balls for him. And he's in total command. This is after his game. All right, we'll be back. Game's tied at six games apiece, so there's that. Oh. <laughs> well, that was a ball-crushing break, and he made the nine on the break to win the game. So it's now 7-6, Efren Reyes. Well, a lot of people might seem to think that uh, a lot of luck up comes into play in that kind of a situation, but that, those are studied shots, too. Well, uh, it's a little bit random, and in tournament play, the nine ball goes in on the break two to four percent of the time, and mm -hmm. uh, much less figure than what most people would think it to be. Now well, he's hit a good break again, and uh, he's not been rewarded. But uh, once again, Earl does not have a shot at the one ball, and he's uh, clearly not happy about it. That's the nice thing about this, though. The length of the match, believe me, most of this is the ebb and tide of luck is going to go both ways. So, luck will not be the uh, decider. The controlling factor, yes. Well, Everett was telling me uh, just before the match that uh, he figures that uh, head to head, uh, he and Earl are almost even in their uh, experiences uh, against each other. Yeah, I've bore witness to quite a few of the matches, and, uh, <clears throat> well, Earl won the world title from Efren in Las Vegas by a very decisive score, 9-2. to two. But uh, Efren has, uh, he's won some very impressive matches against Earl as well. And a very judicious use of speed. You notice that uh, this was clearly a planned leave. It was a difficult one ball to pocket. And he used the speed that the cue ball would end up on the end rail. And even though he failed to make the ball, he left Earl with a tough kick shot. The reason Efren was, uh, uh, chose to play it this way is that the two goes into the sixth ball, leaving him a big pocket down there. So he didn't have to have ideal position in the two. And that afforded him the opportunity. Oh, oh, terrific shot. What a shot by Earl Strickland. <laughs> now he's going to have to make yet another. I think we're going to see this. Uh, I think he's going to try to kick this ball on the side and use the speed and try to hit the two ball full enough that it could possibly bank across the opposite side pocket. So that he gives himself a couple ways to win here. You can see he had a pretty good volume of speed. It's like for once, Earl's going to catch a little bit of a break on the leave. Oh, this is by no means a, an easy shot for Efren. I think we're going to see one of his patented kick safeties here. No, he played offense. And I think the reason that he chose to play offense was that the six ball proximity with the pocket would leave so many opportunities for Earl to make some type of a carom or bank shot that would produce a, a ball pocketing shot that he chose to just go ahead and play offense as opposed to a defensive shot and possibly force Earl into an offensive opportunity. An absolute, absolute terrific bank. Yeah. He had to stiffen that ball up, and by that what I mean is use a great deal of speed so it came straighter off the rail than what the natural angle of the bank would be. 
Well, we're certainly seeing a lot of terrific pool playing at this juncture, folks, and uh, we're not even halfway through the match. And that was a delicate shot that he did right after the bank shot. Well, he's not happy with where he's achieved the angle on the sex ball. I don't think it's going to be a big problem, but the nine does come into play if he tries to go to that side of the table. He has pretty good speed and bumped the nine out of the way. Extremely confident player, as you can see by his uh, the way he yeah. attacks a rack. When they're laid out there, he doesn't waste time. He he puts just goes ball. for it. We're now tied again at seven games apiece. Going to the fifteenth game of this match, which goes all of three nights and which is being held here at the Richways Bar and Restaurant in Hong Kong. You know, interesting enough, uh, Earl uh, plays with a Q-Tech Q, and uh, he endorses that Q. And it's one of the most significant pool player endorsements that ever existed in pool. Um, this is a company that is actually based on the fact that they have Earl Strickland as an endorsement, and uh, I hope uh, they appreciate that fact that he's, he's brought their Q into prominence. On the opposite end of the spectrum, Efren just signed a nice contract with Nucci Qs, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm sure that they're going to get a lot of uh, acclaim from the fact that the uh, greatest player on earth plays with a Nucci Q. Has there been a lot of uh, uh, development in the uh, technology of uh, equipment? The uh, it's a little behind other sports, and there's not been the research and development. Most of the cue makers are content to produce a cue that, uh, well, if that simulates a one-piece hit, then they try to put more uh, ebony and ivory in it and charge you more. But uh, there, there are some cues out on the market now that are starting to show some actual research into what makes the, the maximum playability in a full cue. Uh, beautiful bank shot. Quite a bit of problem laying here. The seven nine is a problem, and the six is a little bit of a problem location-wise. I know that Efren would like to get fairly close to the six and, and somewhat straight, so that he could put enough backspin as well as side spin. And by that, he would need a little bit of right-hand spin to break open the seven and the nine. And he has a pretty sheer angle for doing that. Uh, if he makes a shot, he's going to bump the nine only. And if he misses the breakout, he's going to come out with a position that he can play safe or make another bank shot. Boy, couldn't have hit it any better. Yes. As you mentioned, Mark, both of these players uh, make very fast decisions in front of the pool table. Is there is there a way that sometimes you can make a mistake by being too quick on the draw? Well, uh, both of these players have an immense amount of experience to draw upon. And for them, the decisions are uh, made not at the instant that you see it. They've been made years past, mm -hmm. and they've perfected it. We're going to get to see, this is perhaps the most spectacular shot of the match, position-wise. You can see he had to use a lot of low right, as predicted. And he just clips the nine ball, and you just couldn't have drawn that up on the chalkboard any better. Oh, yes. So now, Efren Reyes takes a one-game lead at 8-7. to seven. We are uh, playing a race to 35 here on the first night of this nine ball challenge between Efren Reyes of the Philippines and Earl Strickland of the United States. Another terrific break. Uh, a much improved area of the uh, game for Efren. Not too much luck, though. Not much luck, but when you get the dispersal of the balls to that extent, that you give yourself the greatest chance to make a ball. 
you know, the length of this match, it's going to be interesting not only to see how the players hold up, it's going to be interesting to see how the ball girls hold up there. Mm -hmm. They're going to be on their feet for some time. <laughs> That's true. I went for an offensive bank shot. And uh, this is the good thing about playing offense in pool. Sometimes you inadvertently stumble into a defensive shot when uh, you, you don't make the offensive shot as planned. And when things are going your way, and especially for Earl, he can, a lot, huh? well, he can maximize uh, the benefit. If he made that ball, you might have saw three or four games el 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 elapse before Ephraim would even get another mm -hmm. good turn at the table. One of the rare times that Ephraim backed away from a shot. Yeah, it's awful hard to second guess his judgment on shot selection, and uh, things oh. tend to turn out his his way. No. Well, he surprised uh, us uh, quite a few times in this game. Uh, Earl's prone to give a little speech during the match, and. Uh, What's, what's he complaining about? Uh, he was uh, questioning whether we're playing all fouls now. There's every possibility that we could see some verbal fireworks before the week's out. <laughs> A lot of stress on these guys. Well, I'm not sure if Efren's going to be willing to get into that. No, Efren's going to stay focused on the matter at hand here. He's, he's here to win the match. Perfect shot yes. that was. That would be equivalent to Efren's terrific shot last game for difficulty. And by no means out of the woods. Absolute another tremendous shot. I'm not sure if Earl's been rewarded here. He's awful close to the point on the side pocket. Chance there's a there's a tendency to let down amongst lesser quality players and mentally and as soon as you let down for an instant, believe me, it'll bite you. I can't help getting the impression that sometimes uh, uh, Earl Strickland's uh, speeches uh, is also a bit of a one-upmanship. He tends to feed off of negative energy, and by that mm -hmm. what I mean is uh, he he tries to build himself up. Right for, for mere mortals, that, that show of emotion could get you uh, off sync for a while there, but uh, not Earl Strickland. No, he's had years of training at this, and uh, let me assure you that uh, he, he may voice his displeasure or be disgruntled, but uh, I think that's more of an act as uh, opposed to... Uh, but granted, he's feeling that way, but it doesn't seem to bother him. Once he bends over the cue ball, that's all gone, mm -hmm. and uh, you can be drawn into getting into an uh, engaged verbal war with him and you'll never win. Well, as I pointed out earlier, uh, Efren is not, uh, it's not in his character to get into something like that. So I don't know if it would bother him. No, he's used to it. He's played uh, Earl for many years now and knows what to expect. Another tremendous break. Earl does not have a shot, and the three ball's in a tough location, too. Anytime a ball is on the rail near the side pocket, that happens to be the absolute single most toughest, most difficult place on the entire pool table. And he's looking at the possibility of a safety. And he's looking at the possibility of a two rail kick, and he's looking at the possibility of a jump or a mass A, and he's lining up the jump. A jump bank. Oh, boy. A jump bank shot. That's about maximum aggressiveness there. 
jumping a ball to play a bank shot. A bank shot's an iffy proposition to begin with, Ed. Yeah. But if you said he seems to uh, play all feed off on uh, these uh, negative situations, and he's showing that to full extent here. Got the balls laid out in good fashion now. Okay. And now Earl Strickland takes the lead. And he's put the game ball down with authority that time. Mm -hmm. and, uh, he's trying to make a statement, I think, with his ball pocketing. What a terrific shot maker he's been the last two games, huh? Oh, yes. He has certainly uh, taken command of this match at this point. And he's lived up to his billing of the offensive juggernaut. Yes. He wanted to, uh, jumps the ball to get to a bank shot to, <laughs> to get to another tough cut down the rail. And even threw out a couple little side comments while mm -hmm. doing so. With well, seems to be in the zone now. Yeah, he's intense. Earl Strickland leads the match nine games to eight. Another tremendous break. And finally, something's starting to happen for him. He's getting some rewards off the mm -hmm. break here the last couple of times. He created the run out last time with a jump bank, and now he's got a shot on the two. It looks like he may have to play the three ball with it. Might be a combination. It's hard to tell from our vantage point. Played the combination. We got the combination. That's something that Efren does extra good. Is uh, he plays position from balls like that very well? He mm -hmm. he gets the cue ball to come down there, and it's a byproduct of uh, rotation as well. For us Americans, it just adds so much difficulty to even making the ball that uh, sometimes we're not very effective playing from ball to ball or through balls with the cue ball. Rotation's not as popular in the states as it is. In no, it isn't. And uh, I learned it in a uh, month-long stay with Efren. Mm -hmm. And have uh, grown to love and appreciate that game. It uh, certainly uh, it offers a far more challenge to a good player than nine ball does. Everyone has a chance to make the nine here with a good accurate kick. And I'm sure he'll be happy to just hit the two ball. But if he hits the proper side, he may even be rewarded with a game-winning shot. Cool. Uh, he made a, cool. Yep. He made a good try. He landed on the right side. No foul. No, it's a foul. It was a it was a bad hit. The referee called a foul, and uh, mm -hmm. Earl was willing to accept uh, Efren's word on it. Uh, in uh, Efren uh, or Earl believes in sportsmanship. He's a golfer, and uh, he plays by a code of ethics. He's a very firm believer of that. Well, I think just acknowledged it with a grin. Well, frankly, Efren's a little amused by the behavior. By the way. It's so opposite of him that uh, he, he, he's kind of entertained by that, as well as the crowd. Telling it makes the match even more interesting. That some verbal fireworks are coming out of one end and not on the other. No. <laughs> All right. Sometimes it uh, comes down to uh, the east and west uh, type of culture where the uh, Orientals are not want to verbalize too much. 
Yeah, they tend to be a little more stoic, and uh, mm -hmm. some of the Americans, they really, uh, they show a lot of emotion. Let it all hang out, huh? Yeah. What gives here, Mike? Well, I'm not sure whether Griffin looks like he might have been left with a, a difficult enough shot that he may have to be forced to look at playing safe. He's looking at the kick safety here. I think he's going to try to stick the cue ball right there where the six is and by coming into the rail and then hitting the six. Now he played the six into the nine to stop the cue ball. And that's a little trick for uh, good safety play. Try not to move both balls on the table. He played total command over the six by stopping it by hitting it in the nine and just let the cue ball kind of run wild to this end of the table, leaving mm -hmm. Earl long and length of the table away. He wasn't happy with the angle that left, though. I think he feels that Earl has a good possibility to make the bank. Well, it really shown that uh, it's not too much of a difficult shot for him, but let's see. Look at that cut shot. Yeah. Spectacular. Yeah, that was some good confidence to spin that ball in. Two-game lead now taken by Earl Strickland at 10 to 8. This is the opening night of this uh, three-night match, dubbed as the color of money. It's a $100,000 winner-take-all challenge, nine-ball format. Reaching you from the Ridgeways Bar and Restaurant here in Hong Kong, I'm Ed Pixon for Vintage Sports. With me is Mark Wilson. And certainly, Mark, uh, your commentary has uh, been very informative and educational for a lot of us. <laughs> well, I spend a great deal of time with these guys, and I study them. And uh, I'll tell you, each guy has uh, some certain uh, characteristics with his uh, demeanor and mm -hmm. character that... Uh, I've seen time and again and I'm amused by. Not everyone finds the same amusement, and I'm not always <laughs> endorsing it. I'm just saying that's the way it is. That's the way it is. Oh, an absolute bone-crushing break. But, yeah. uh, nothing went in. The four ball hung in the pocket. The two ball went to the rim of the pocket. The seven ball near the pocket. Efren comes to the table without much of a shot. I'm not sure what he can do. It'll be a very difficult angle to hit the side pocket from there. He has the potential to make a billiard shot by carrying the one ball into the four. But the, the reward doesn't look to uh, justify the risk. This is the type of shot that really separates the masters of the game. And, uh, this is the type of shot that I would never dream of second-guessing what uh, Efren Reyes would choose to do here. Seems to be still weighing his options here. Yeah, I think we're going to see a safety, and I think he's trying to determine if he can get the one all the way to the end rail or if he wants to try to play uh, maximum control on the cue ball. Ideally, he'd like to do both, but in this position, it's so difficult that I think he's going to have to settle for one or the other. Playing a two rail bank shot. No, well, he chose the safety. Uh, uh, I think he means he was trying to play the four ball. Yeah, I was pointing at it. Yeah, I, I'm not sure. Had he made the four, I'm sure he wouldn't have obtained much of a shot on the one unless he was planning to, to bump the one into the five. Another great offensive shot. Pretty accurate uh, Earl Strickland at this point. Nice shot. Any, do you see any difficulty in, in 
what uh, Earl Strickland uh, faces now, Mark? No, he's he's in good shape. I, I, I tell you, I've had a long little incident. He's he's very uh, temperamental about conditions. And uh, when we first arrived here, he examined the table mm. and uh, fine-tuned it himself uh, in a couple instances. And uh, I'm not saying he did anything wrong, but mm -hmm. the pockets weren't shaped properly. And he even took a razor himself and ended up he slightly cut his finger in uh, repairing <laughs> the table. <laughs> well, that's how meticulous. Uh, Earl Strickland can be, but as you mentioned earlier, uh, Mark, he feeds off on those negative things. Uh, he verbalizes his feelings, but it doesn't, well, it sort of propels him to do yeah. something uh, uh, to a higher level. Yeah, it, it either, it works one of two ways. He either goes to a higher level or sometimes he loses his focus if he gets too carried away, but uh, he's pretty mature and pretty experienced at uh, his M.O. And uh, I would say that one of the, the strengths that he has is his will to win. Mm -hmm. He is here to win this match, and uh, make no mistake, uh, I, I, I know he's supremely confident. And once again, he's instructing the referee to the proper methods. He's in the lead 11 games to eight. There's an example of a perfect break. A cue ball stopped dead in the middle of the table. The one ball went in the side. And uh, if he gets that one ball going on the side, boy, this is going to be awful tough. Efren Reyes to overcome his uh, huge offensive arsenal. Well, Earl seems to be in total control at the moment. He's really found his rhythm in the last mm -hmm. uh, six, eight games, I think. You know, it's truly really amazing. We've hardly seen a missed ball. There's just anything that they've shot at, they've made. It looks so easy. You, know, that, that you don't realize the high level of, or high standard that they're setting. Any of these games are only lasting uh, just one turn of the table by the same player that broke balls. This juncture, Mark, what would Efren be thinking? Well, yeah, uh, I can assure you he's not worried. He's thinking about his next turn at the table. It's, it, he's not concerned with what goes on here. He, he really hasn't played poorly or anything. He's just not had the uh, terrific uh, starts. And uh, honestly, his break hasn't been as uh, potent as Earl's has. Earl Strickland is starting to pull away. He has taken command. He has got uh, the lead at 12 to 8, a four game lead, which is uh, the biggest so far in this match. But we've got a long haul, as we said. This will go on for three nights, total of 120 games to win the $100,000 challenge, dubbed as the color of money here at Richways in Hong Kong. You know, interesting enough, there's not much pool played in Hong Kong. Hong Kong's a mm -hmm. snooker city, and the matches that we've had here, you can see the enthusiasm building and the uh, interest and the education of the people as uh, they're getting to be very knowledgeable pool fans. They applaud for proper safety, uh, a well-played safety mm -hmm. or a good shot, and not just a game-winning shot or even a nine ball on the break, which is, uh, you know, a little fortuitous yes. as opposed to by design. Well, certainly the proprietor of Ridgeway's uh, Bar and Restaurant has been in the forefront of trying to create awareness of the uh, sport uh, here in Hong Kong. Let's see if the one goes in the side again. Boy, that'll be a big asset for us. Yeah, we're very close. Yeah. He's made the eight. I'm not sure what type of an offensive shot he has. The one ball's kind of in a precarious position that may force him to play either uh, straight away shot on the one, or he may try to billiard the cue ball off the one into the seven. Or he may try that shot on uh, safety by placing the cue ball behind the seven and moving the one to the other end of the table. Extremely well played. and uh, well, You can see that uh, the angle left uh, to Efren is uh, very difficult. It's not the most palatable situation to come to the table with uh, a iffy situation like this and then already trailing in the match. and. Your opponent not missing a darn ball. Effort made a terrific hit. That kind of situation, Mark, where you've been 
sitting around uh, so long and then you come up with a difficult uh, shot your first time up after so long. Uh, what 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 is the situation there for the player? Well, the, for the, the less experienced player, uh, absolute paralysis sets in <laughs> about that time. But uh, for these guys, they 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 are pretty judicious about their shot selection. Don't you get a little rusty after? Oh, know? absolutely, yeah. The, and that's why I say the first shot of any inning is the most important to establish control. And sometimes when they, when they're feeling iffy, they, they'll play a more conservative uh, position. But absolutely, you've lost your rhythm, you've lost mm -hmm. your momentum, and uh, the other guy appears to have everything. In, uh, if you're struck with the thought right before you shoot the ball that, gosh, if I miss this one, I'm going to lose four more games, mm -hmm. you know, well, uh, believe me, missing comes into play. Well, certainly it looks like Earl has gotten this rhythm here and is trying to sustain it. Yeah, once again, this is a game that was set up by his break. He made a ball in the break, and then he played safe. And the safety was effective enough that he was able to uh, create himself a shot and run out. So uh, a lot of times, even though uh, it looks like uh, he didn't run out from the break, really the whole game was set up by his devastating break. Well, Ernest Strickland looking to erect a five-point or five-game advantage. He is now leading 13 to 8. Is there such a thing as being able to pace yourself in, in, in this sort of a format? Well, I think that's going to come into play, uh, certainly. And, um, you know, the ebb and flow of emotion comes and goes, and the good fortunes come and go. And I think the uh, person that uh, can stay focused the longest is going to win this match. Mm -hmm. It's uh, really, it's a test of wills and a, a test of mental strength. Both of these players with, presented with the same opportunities can clear up the balls from anywhere on the table. Oh, yeah. yes. Well, we've seen that happen several times in this match, and we expect to see more and more interesting situations to occur. Another dynamic break. Yeah. Four balls still spinning. And... Uh, Earl's picking up the pace. He's moving around. Really, this is going to be the trickiest part of the whole run out would be uh, getting over this nine ball and get positioned down on the three ball on the end rail where his leg's hanging. Chose to go with extreme top left. And I'm not sure. He hit a terrific shot. I'm just not sure if he's been rewarded. Yeah, he's eyeing it up. He's not sure either. some soft left English and try to hook the cue ball. A terrific shot. Oh, yes. a terrific shot. He couldn't do as much with the cue ball as he would have liked position-wise due to the uh, immense difficulty of slightly curving the cue ball and getting to the cut mm. shot that he just made. What a tremendous shot that was. Uh, you just can't believe the amount of pressure on you to, to come up with a shot like that. Well, he's never of two minds about making the shot. Once it gets set up, he'll go for it. Yeah, that certainly is an important uh, facet of this game is that you need to make up your mind and, and adhere to that. And uh, his absolute forte is execution. He's a shot maker and the, uh, a ball pocketer. No well, problems. Mark Wilson was talking about the Speaking of the offensive juggernaut, and we're certainly getting treated to an exhibition of that as Earl Strickland now leads 14 to 8, a six game advantage for the gentleman from the United States. Yeah, he seems very comfortable out there, mm -hmm. and I think he's even getting the referees trained and the ball girls trained. And <laughs> He's earning his pay right now. Well, he certainly loses no words as to how he wants the uh, situation to be.
Now the last couple of breaks he's hit him so hard the one ball's yeah. gone on past the side pocket and I know that he would like to see the one ball going in the side pocket with frequency. It's going there. Yeah, there he got it. Here comes the two right down by the cue ball. And look at this. Ooh. Absolute uh, terrible misfortune for Earl. The lay of the ball is there. There was a good likelihood he was going to clear up the table again. Certainly looked like it, but uh, well, Efren Reyes now gets his turn. You can't really say that this is a must-win rack, but it would certainly be nice for Efren to exert himself at this point uh, to kind of reestablish himself in this match. I'm not sure he realizes that. After sitting there for so long, there's uh, even a situation as routine as this one is still very difficult and requires total focus. I know for a fact that it takes them a lot of time to, uh, well, they need a lot of time to warm up just before a match. But sitting there for about 15, 20 minutes, just uh, looking at the, your opponent, certainly will take a lot out of you. Yeah, yeah. Now, Efren practiced on this table yesterday, and he played a game called straight ball. And in that game, he made 98 consecutive balls. I happen to be the lucky opponent. Oh. <laughs> and uh, but believe me when I tell you, I totally enjoy his command of uh, this game of pool. The way he moves the cue ball around. Judicious use of speed and angles. tries to get back and uh, narrows the gap. It is now 14 to 9 in favor of Earl Strickland. You know, in the United States, a, a lot of the men pro players, uh, a lot of them are maybe a, a little bit jealous of Earl, but because uh, he's had wild success there. But they uh, also feel that sometimes his behavior is less than becoming for the sport. But I'm, I'm here to tell you that most of that is uh, kind of a petted jealousy thing, mm -hmm. that uh, there's other guys that act in uh, you know, worse behavior, but because uh, these other guys can beat them, they don't seem to mind it near as much as uh, <laughs> Earl poses the big the big threat, the big hammer at a tournament. So, uh, and uh, not that he doesn't make his own bed sometimes and kind of get people written against him, and, and I'm not sure, sometimes I think he kind of likes that adversarial relationship with the audience, the opponent, mm -hmm. or, or whoever. Well, we've seen that happen uh, in this match, and we've seen how it has propelled uh, Earl Strickland to where he is now, which is in the lead. Yeah, it's working well right now. Let me tell you, it can go the other way on him. I've seen it burning many times. And in all honesty, he really hasn't been the beneficiary of a great deal of luck in this match so far. He's uh, What he's made, he's created. He's that. worked for it. I remember a, a position where he hadn't made a ball on the break several times, and he finally, uh, he just up and made a jump bank shot yeah. to, to just to get an offensive turn. Well, there's a patented power shot. When you hit a ball that hard, you absolutely have to be deathly accurate. a little gamble and uh, this was a byproduct of just being a little bit uh, loose and carefree on the, on the ball preceding the four ball. And he's absolutely unhappy with the outcome of this. Well, everyone will now try and seize the opportunity that error by Earl Strickland and he buries his face in his hands. See a little bit of power on this shot. And he 
played it the, the smart way rather than try to come back on top of it and risk a scratch. He achieved one of the most difficult angles in pool. This is kind of shooting to a blind pocket because you got to shoot out away from the rail. Oh, well, what a, it pretty accurate. He made a terrific shot, but uh, he gave up a little bit of an ideal position play with uh, in an attempt to make a difficult shot. No, he's clearly not happy with the outcome of this. Oh, yes. What kind of a shot you think he'll play? Uh, clearly, there's not much of an offensive opportunity. But my prediction is he's going to move the nine ball to the end rail that it's pointed at now and attempt to maneuver the cue ball back to this end rail, leaving maximum distance and the rail to rail possibility. He's got the nine ball pretty good. And uh, he said he wasn't blessed with too much luck with that last, the other shot. And uh, well, his uh, aim was just to make it a little bit more difficult for Earl. Now, this is by no means a routine bank shot because it's what we call off angle. You notice the alignment of the one and the nine is very straight. So now Earl has to cut the ball to get the proper angle to head toward the pocket. This type of shot's played with enough speed that the cute nine ball could go two cushions and make. Pretty good crisp speed. He hit it very well. That was an excellent shot, and he just wasn't rewarded, but he made a tremendous attempt. And uh, we'll chalk one up for tactics that time. Oh, yeah. Good safety won that game. Well, Alfred Reyes uh, did not let the situation with the uh, nine ball unnerve him. Uh, just played uh, to the best of his abilities to get back to that. Now Earl Strickland's lead is down to four at 14 to 10. And it will be er Efren Reyes' uh, turn at the break. Well, the match has lived up to its billing completely. Oh, certainly, certainly is. Well, the pool enthusiasts uh, that have gathered here at Ridgeway certainly are uh, getting uh, what they expected from these two top caliber players. We've seen a lot already in this uh, short time that we we've certainly have <laughs> in every facet of the game. We've really uh, not witnessed a match of this length for, uh, with the uh, stakes riding on them like mm -hmm. we have here. And it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out over three days. Well, everybody's looking forward to uh, seeing a lot of uh, superb uh, pool between these two players. I want you to notice he's moved eight of the nine balls from the rack to the other opposite end of the mm -hmm. table. This is a byproduct of a good square hit. And uh, it's really uh, bad luck that he didn't make a ball on the break because he hit them very dynamically. The best breakers in the world make a ball on the break without scratching uh, somewhere in the vicinity of two-thirds of the time. So they, even the best breakers have a one-third failure rate, and it's just out of their control. All you can do is make a great hit, but uh, beyond that, you're subject to a little bit of luck. Yes. Earl made a tremendous safety there. It was an off-angle position, and... Uh, Efren is really going to have to pull a rabbit out of his hat now to uh, turn this game around. Okay. Made a good hit. He was rewarded, but uh, he was a little fortunate, too. He had the possibility of a scratch there, and he really didn't leave her much of an offensive shot, I don't think, unless it's a cut in the side. Oh. Yeah, the angle was a little bit deceiving. I think yeah, that uh, from our, from our vantage point. Now the transition from the two to the three to the four will dictate the outcome of this rack. He used the uh, side of the pocket, pocketed it nicely, and that changed the ideal position on the three. Hopefully the backspin. Ooh. That's one of the first missed balls we've seen. Mm -hmm. And you can see.
see about where the cue ball went. He needed to hit that outside portion of the pocket in order to maintain the angle that he was looking for. The efforts had a, uh, a, a massive backspin shot mm -hmm. and uh, Again. not been rewarded. He made a great shot there. Unfortunately, there's some risk involved in those type shots. Mm -hmm. so hit him with that volume of power and speed and spin. And you give him some control. Yeah, you know, uh, that shot, interestingly enough, I know uh, Efren kind of practice stroked it a couple times afterwards, and he's logging in a way mentally the reaction that he got from the cloth there. And by the end of the week, uh, shots like that, he will have those down to where he has a total command over them. Right now, he's still a little bit up to the whim of the table. What effect would uh, playing a long uh, match like this have on the table? The condition of the table. Yeah, uh, when the cloth starts off brand new, it's very slick, and uh, the balls uh, go in quite freely because there's not as much friction. Plus, uh, to obtain massive amounts of spin, the cue ball is a lot easier. As we go along, and the humidity piles up, and the wear on the cloth piles up, the table's actually going to change, and it's going to be a much more difficult table to pocket balls on. Balls will not go in on the break as freely, and uh, I think. Uh, Tactics will come into it uh, in a bigger way. Right now, this is more set up for offense. <coughs> in a match such as this, where we will go 120 for a player to be able to win it. Um, will there be a, a point in the match, let's say on the second night, where you could call a lead safe? Well, um, I think by then we'll certainly have a good feel for how the match is going, and uh, it'll probably be a pretty telling point by midway tomorrow night. Mm -hmm. Efren just received uh, quite a bit of uh, luck there. He missed the combination shot and, and uh, inadvertently made the ball and obtained ideal position. Uh, don't think that went unnoticed by Efren's opponent. Oh, yes. This is a byproduct of the game, and hopefully the length of the match will uh, take care of that from both sides. You know, we go for Efren. A lot of people feel that uh, luking a ball or lucking a ball and shouldn't be a part of the game. But uh, interesting enough, a lot of the spectators kind of enjoy that aspect of it, that there is a little luck and a little randomness, and sometimes the pool gods dip down and, and benefit a player. Well, there's that cliche that says the more you practice, the luckier you get. Uh, as uh, the famous football coach Vince Lombardi once said, luck is the residue of hard work. Oh, so yes. you train hard enough, sometimes that uh, little fortune falls your way too. You know, interesting enough, luck can't be too big a part of it. These two oh, guys yes. have dominated nine ball worldwide. So if luck was much of a part of it, we'd have somebody that had that command over the game. Now we've had a little bad luck. Efren made a terrific break, stopped the cue ball dead in the pocket, or dead in the center of the table, and the ball came and kicked it from the middle of the table dead into the corner pocket. That's what you call bad luck. Yeah, the 8-9 will be uh, a test of her own skills. He doesn't have any balls down here to utilize to break them out. And uh, the lay of the balls precludes him from bumping into them at any point during the runout. So he's going to have to transition from the seven ball to the eight, nine breakout. And he'll play it in such a way that if he doesn't get the breakout, he's going to have a routine safety, minimizing his risk this rack. I know a lot of younger players that they confront with a situation like this. They, they don't make the routine shots getting there because they know that they're going to be confronted with this sticky situation later mm -hmm. on and then they don't focus like they should for these guys. Well, you can see that uh, Earl Strickland has a lot of uh, patience in him. And he knows he'll, it'll take a little longer, but uh, he's willing to wait it out. He's achieved the ideal position on the seven. The cue ball will naturally want to head down toward the eight and nine, and he's just deciding now how he's going to go at it. choice here is whether to go to the side rail and come two rails and try to bump the nine only, or to go directly into the eight nine right off the seven ball. 
chosen the rail position in. Yeah, rich and rewarding. Well, for a while there, he was talking to himself, and uh, sometimes you can sense that he's hyping himself up to uh, to that degree. Yeah, definitely. He, uh, to, to play with that type of precision, you have to have 100% of your focus on that. And I think sometimes the, uh, when, he, when he talks to himself like that, he, he lets off a little air energy mm -hmm. that sometimes would be distracting or cause static in that volume of focus so that he can get totally uh, back and utilize all his energy to, to make the task at hand uh, something that he can really complete. It was one of the rare occasions where you really seem pause and take a little uh, decision time, you know, where maybe, I, I don't mean much, 15 seconds maybe, mm -hmm. but that's, that's a lot by these guys. Why do you do that? Um, it, as the table gets worn in from all the breaking, uh, there's little dimples in the table that uh, get there and the balls don't freeze up nearly as well. When the balls are not frozen very well, they don't, uh, they don't break well, and that's a, being such a big factor for Earl, that's, that's his game is this uh, oh, yeah. offense that, that he wants to make sure that the rack is proper. Well, it appeared that the wing ball went in, and that's, uh, that hasn't been happening a whole lot so far this match. The wing ball would be the two balls, the extreme edge of the rack. And when those balls go in, that's going to benefit the uh, power break, which is Earl. Earl tried that. I don't know what type of a shot there. It looks like from the cue ball position that was a safety, but where the one ball went, it uh, appears that maybe he was playing the bank as well. I'm not just sure. Sometimes when he gets into his momentum, uh, sometimes he, he fires at balls and uh, he, he has things occur to him that uh, maybe appear to be a little bit careless, but he kind of feeds off that. Sometimes things turn out well for him when he plays with that tempo and uh, he doesn't spend any time second guessing himself. He commits to decisions. Which is the way it should be. Well, and sometimes he's rewarded and sometimes he's penalized from it. But, uh, naturally, the preponderance of the time, uh, it's a winning style of pool. Here we get to see a beautiful position play. Efren brought the cue ball around, not to obtain a cut shot, but to get ideal position for the bank. The only part that makes this a little bit difficult is position for the five. And he's executed it perfectly. That was far more difficult than it looked. He had to use a little draw to avoid bumping the cue ball into the five. And it's still far from routine. A lot of uh, pool experts have said that the skill of uh, Efren Reyes in placement is certainly something to marvel at. Yeah, his position play is uh, second to none. Mm -hmm. and that was one of the categories that I gave him a big check in. Yeah, nice shot there. This game and has again narrowed the gap at 14 to 12 in the first night of the three night match between these two gentlemen, Efren Reyes of the Philippines and Earl Strickland of the United States of America. Winner take all, a $100,000 pot in what is called as the color of money, a nine ball challenge here at the Richways Bar and Restaurant in Hong Kong. Okay, let's see if Efren can get that one more side pocket now that uh, I'm sure it's on his mind. Get the cue ball, square up. That's not uh, too much luck with the break uh, here, Mike. No, he's just a little short in the power department. That's the reward for having that super power break is that you get a little more dis distance <laughs> on those object balls. And the more distance you get, the more pocket openings they have to go by and the greater the chance of making a ball. When the one ball's not going in the side, nor the wing ball's going in the corner, you have to rely on those balls going around the table and, 
That yeah. will be the decided advantage of a uh, real Strickland. Absolutely. Yeah. Look at that shot. Oh, yeah. He played a, uh, a half safety. That was a two way shot. He knows where he drew the cue ball back. Had the one not gone in the corner pocket, he was safe and uh, rewarded if he does make the shot. He's got the potential to win. Mm. By no means was the two ball an easy oh. shot. Mm -hmm. well, this is just the, what the doctor ordered for Afrin getting back in this match. Uh, Way will look there for a while. It looked like it might be lights out the way after Earl had his offense going. It's only sputtered just a little bit. And uh, believe me when I tell you, he really has not had the advantage in the breaks of the game so far. But in a long match like this, I, I would uh, seem to think that. Uh, the tide will shift from one to the other. Absolutely. Several times, as a matter of fact. Yeah, I think ultimately what's going to tell the tale is uh, one, uh, Earl's going to have the edge big in the break department. Mm -hmm. And I think in the position of safety play, I think this is going to be a telling uh, factor is the effort that I have a big edge in that. And so for that reason, the contrast in styles makes this a super interesting match. If you notice, uh, Efren nearly always plays the balls with uh, soft speeds, mm -hmm. and uh, this is a byproduct of achieving the proper angles, ball after ball. He's the master of position. By no means is Earl a uh, poor position player, by no means. Uh, probably uh, second best in the world. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's the one area that I give uh, Efren the notch, uh, I would say, would be in his position and safeties. That's why the pool world has certainly taken a long, hard look at this match. I guess the possibilities are endless. All right, so we'll take a short break. Efren Reyes has just narrowed the gap to just a one-game lead here for Earl Strickland. Good break by Efren Reyes getting the one ball to the side pocket. Got a great shot there by Efren. Now he's facing a bank shot here. But I don't think we're going to see him play the offensive bank shot because the 6 7 precludes him from having an easy time running out. And as soon as I say that, he makes the bank easy. And he had a terrific shot there, but he didn't come up with much of an offensive shot. There, the score is 15 to 13. I have to play this straight away. Uh, safety there. Yeah. And, uh, I was going to have to attempt a kick shot. I don't think we're going to see him kick it with a great deal of speed. No, a little harder than I anticipated. The reason I say I didn't think we'd see a great deal of speed is that he really doesn't want to risk bumping the 6 7 loose. That's, mm -hmm. that's the one saving grace that he would have if he could hit the ball. My efforts fell just a little bit short of ideal on this. I think he must be playing shape to play and bank the 6 ball cross side. Bank shot here, especially with a uh, obtaining position. Yeah. No making, problem there. No, not making the bank, but the obtaining good position. Oh. It, it was just that uh, the balls weren't laying proper for him. 
Now he's in the just pure offensive mode. <laughs> he might as well go ahead and make the other two as well. I can show some left handed stroke. Nearly identical to his right handed stroke. Mm -hmm. well, you get to develop that through the years. That was by no means an easy shot on the nine. It was elevated over the side pocket. And any time that you elevate, you have to hit downward on the cue ball. The risk of missing is uh, multiplied. Here we get to see some of his bank shots produced. Tremendous shot there by Efren Reyes to cut the lead of Earl Strickland to one game at 15 to 14. There's the one ball in the side pocket. And that's uh, that's going to be a big boost for Efren to even, uh, even if he doesn't come up with a shot of the two. Well, he certainly heaved a sigh of relief. He hasn't been get, getting the uh, good position or good luck in the breaks, but uh, it's certainly a lot better than what he has come up with the previous times. What a tremendous shot. Oh, yeah. Now, the 5 8, uh, that's the last remaining situation that might be a little bit to deal with in this rack. I know that he's already played it in his mind. I just can't tell from the, the way that we're sitting in the lay of the balls. The 5 goes in the side, then we won't see him pull from any of these balls. He must go. He's queuing up. Let's go in there. Now we're going to see a three rail bigger position here. Maybe just one rail. Maybe not have to deal with the nine. Yeah, just one rail. He used maximum left hand spin. You can see the deviation the cue ball took when it hit the rail. Efren's the master of putting massive spin on with minimum mm -hmm. force, and uh, it allows him to make shots other players don't even imagine because he has that type of stroke that lends itself to that. How do you develop such a stroke? Well, this is the marvel or the genius of Efren Reyes. Uh, I've never witnessed anyone else that uh, has even come close to what he's developed here, stroke and technique-wise. again at 15 games apiece after Reyes coming into the situation after falling behind by five games has evened up the score. And so now Efren Reyes has another opportunity at the break. Made the wing ball that time. The one ball rimmed the pocket. And look at this kiss. He's he's obtained a shot. He was hooked behind the three. He got kissed back out in the uh, open. You know what a tremendous comeback already we witnessed yeah. there. He was uh, five or six games down there mm -hmm. just a little bit ago, and I think uh, since then the Earls only won one game. in kind of a sticky situation here. It's not an easy safety. The combination shot's not a very palpable shot, especially when you're elevating over the sixth bar. He's weighing up the options now. <clears throat> it looks to me as though he may be forced to play the combination. The immense difficulty of safety is not worth the re, uh, risk, so he may as well play, go down playing offense. Played safe, but I know he's not happy. It was, it was awful difficult. Either way, he went. And he was really, he was really in a bind. Well, Earl Strickland is taking his time here.
like an Earl Strickland you know, goes into his uh, verbal mode. I think it's also important what he did just before he took the first shot, that he took time to compose himself to get his bearings. Yeah, especially after sitting down for a while. Mm -hmm. He wanted to make sure to get full advantage out of this uh, opportunity. Back in the lead, Earl Strickland. An extremely well executed run after uh, virtually sitting there for six or seven games mm -hmm. and not getting much of an attempt to get your tempo going. Well, we've certainly been uh, treated to superb pool here, and the uh, excitement is even brewing at a higher degree now that we've got into a closer match again. I believe we'll be uh, taking a break uh, in a short while. Yeah, we're looking at it about uh, two games, I would say. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Just get Earl Strickland sees to it that He's got the situation where he wants it. He's examining the rack to make sure the balls are frozen. Particular balls of importance are the top three balls so that it's not a combination shot going into the rack. That all the balls are fro uh, frozen in the air and she passes right through them real freely. And you got the one on the side. Nine's hitting there. Bump. Look at the position he's obtained. This is absolutely ideal. This is patented Earl Strickland offense. Mm -hmm. Wonder he takes pains to see to it that uh, everything is in tip-top shape before he even attempts to break. It certainly has been paying off all the effort. Yeah, it'd be interesting to know the statistic of uh, the number of racks broken and run out throughout this match. Mm -hmm. I think uh, they would probably approach new records. And we're only in the first night. Right. A little interesting statistic on the break. Uh, even with the best players in the world, they scratch 13% of the time. They right. commit a foul, yeah. Mm -hmm. So far, I think we've only seen one or two in this match. Ladies uh, assisting uh, referee Neil Martin in this match, and that even makes uh, the contest more attractive. Well, it certainly does, and uh, I certainly have to attribute some of that to you. I noticed they didn't show up till you did. <laughs> I wish that were true, Mike. Well, I'm glad to have you here. We're glad to be here. You know, Vintage Sports, uh, the uh, production outfit that uh, is covering this has also been in the forefront together with uh, Mr. Puyat and trying to bring the uh, sport of pool and billiards to uh, Filipino homes and Asian homes just at that. And we've gotten a tremendous amount of uh, support from uh, the Filipino audience. Well, I know how much pool is loved in the oh, Philippines. Yes. Uh, yeah. I spent a month there, and you certainly have a together TV crew. Uh, they mm -hmm. came in at the last minute and did an absolutely tremendous job. And <laughs> the cameramen are attentive and interested, and uh, it's a, a pleasure to work with total professionals. We're a bit flabbergasted uh, at the, the short notice, but uh, as we said, uh, we grabbed it as soon as it, the opportunity presented itself because uh, being able to witness such uh, 
high quality of play doesn't come around too often. Masterfully. He took a page right out of Efren's playbook on the safety <laughs> portion of the game. And this is going to be tough for Efren to generate much here. It looks like he may have to. He's lining something up. He's going to try to kick two rails and bring the cue ball on top of the seven. And hopefully get uh, fortunate by blocking it at the six. Soft speed. Wow. Absolute fantastic pull. So what is that what he wanted? That's what he wanted. <laughs> Absolute fantastic pull shot. Now, uh, unfortunately, he didn't want to bump the seven. He's going to throw a possible two-way shot or a bank shot on the six as well as a play on the nine. And I think he'll make one or the other. Got it. Ah. <laughs> Maybe both. <laughs> <laughs> you know, interesting enough, Efren, uh, yeah, I, I look up to him for his immense skills and he always used to tell me that uh, tremendous pool was played in the Philippines and mm -hmm. there's lots of good players there. And uh, he invited me to come and visit and uh, maybe I could help my own personal playing. So uh, in thinking of the uh, cost, I said to him, I said, uh, Efren, do you think maybe I could win a little money? And uh, Efren thought about it for a little bit and uh, he didn't want to offend me, but he said, uh, you're not ready. <laughs> Meaning well, I can come, but I can win. <laughs> that's the most that you can get out of uh, Efren as far as telling you how black it is. Yeah. Well, yeah, I really appreciate it. I did get to come and spend a month with him, and it was absolutely wonderful. He did uh, great things for my pool game. I've reaped rewards ever since. And, uh, and just like you said, I wasn't quite ready for uh, <laughs> the uh, Filipino onslaught that I faced. <laughs> I'm sure you're making your mark uh, in the uh, pool world, Mike, and uh, probably take a little time, just as I'm trying to uh, be able to uh, appreciate the game more and understand it more. Yeah, the nuances of this game, when you see the, uh, to obtain an appreciation for not just the hard shots that you see, but the difficult safeties, uh, some of those are even mm -hmm. more difficult than the shots because True. you're having to control two balls as opposed to just make one and control the cue ball. And this is what Efren does so well, uh, controlling both balls. A perfect example of just what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. yeah, moves the two as well as the cue ball. Well, in a match like this, the learning experience certainly grows and uh, becomes longer as you see so many situations develop with the ability of these two players. Regulars. You know, uh, Earl kicked to make that ball, and it's because it, it, the hit was there was no uh, possibility of uh, defense, so you have to play to make that shot, and you can see how well he hit it. The ball actually ended up right in the mouth of the pocket. Mm -hmm. not happy with the angle he achieved there. It's going to force him to come out here and play the five ball back into the pocket that he just played the uh, two ball. But he's an artist with the cue. Uh, it's just a little bit off angle. This is, uh, he's going to have to do a little negotiation here to get the cue ball across the table and back in alignment with the six ball. Nice firm. Not maximum max spin, but just a little bit of max spin to take the uh, forward momentum off the cue ball. Oh, he hit that a little heavy. What is it anyway? I'll tell you, that's a shot uh, way kind of wobbled in there. And two days from now, that ball may not fall. Mm -hmm. Again, have to make sure that uh, things don't get out of hand as he wins another game and uh, makes a 16th game. That's against 18 so far by Earl Strickland. 
Ladies and gentlemen, after this rack, we're going to adjourn for a half hour break. Well, if you heard the announcement by Mark Wilson after this rack, ladies and gentlemen, these two gentlemen are going to go into a well-deserved half-hour break. Oh, absolutely. They want to kind of recompose themselves mentally and physically mm -hmm. and, uh, and stay focused for this challenge. You know, they had $100,000 cash laid out on the table, <laughs> and uh, I'd never seen so much money. It actually covers the entire table, and there's really? quite a bit of chunk of uh, money left over. <laughs> Well, we I suppose they had security around. Uh, actually, they didn't. And, oh. uh, surprisingly <laughs> enough, after they uh, photographed it, they just swept it into a bag. So. <laughs> I guess most of the people were just too overwhelmed to do yeah. anything about it. <laughs> you can see a masterful break there. The cube will absolutely stop dead in its tracks out in the middle of the table and left himself a pretty good shot on the one. Now he negotiated the cue ball around the six ball quite nicely there. And then Unfortunately, he's been oh. penalized. Uh, he made a terrific shot, and uh, he got a Strickland roll that time. Mm -hmm. now, I think we're going to see either a one-rail offensive shot played or a two-rail safety shot played. Stop the two-rail safety shot. Stop the cue ball magnificently. Totally controlled the cue ball there. That's why they call him the magician. Yeah. Do not think there was any bit of luck in that. That was totally played. And this was the thing that the effort brought to the United States that, uh, that made all the players better. He's kind of the innovator of that kick safety. We always used to just kick hard and try to hit it and maybe get lucky and do something. And uh, Efren taught us a new way. Uh, Earl had a jump shot, one of his patented jump shots. Mm -hmm. He made a good hit out of it. He wasn't rewarded. He left there for a pretty good turn at the table. Maximum right hand spin in an attempt to avoid bumping the nine ball. He didn't want to bump into that. Now he's going to be forced to be a shot maker. And that was a very difficult shot. By no means routine. Here's Efren got a little break here. It's a pretty difficult combination here. Three and a nine did not line up favorable. In order to make this, I was going to have to cut the three very thin. I was looking at the angle here. Oh, tremendous shot. Yeah. Tremendous shot. Now, uh, this is the point of the uh, match where we uh, will take a break for 30 minutes. We'll be right back with the resumption of the match. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're going to clean the balls and get the second half of the match underway. We'll let him be German anyway, huh? <laughs> no problem with that. <laughs> All right, you're back with us here at Ridgeway's Bar and Restaurant uh, in Hong Kong. I'm at Pixon together with Mark Wilson. And uh, this is the resumption of the Color of Money Nine Ball Challenge, a winner-take-all $100,000 pot between Efren Reyes of the Philippines and Earl Strickland of the United States of America. And as we resume, the score stands at 19 to 16. And Earl Strickland will have the break at resumption. Well, there's certainly a sense of urgency for as early in the match as it is. And uh, 
The reason for that is that this is for absolute supremacy in the world. The winner of this is can universally be regarded as the premier player on earth. I'm sure all eyes of the pool and billiard world are on Hong Kong right now and this match. You can see by the looks on both players that they recognize what's at stake here. Yeah. Aside, of course, from the financial remuneration, there is the prestige, as he said, the recognition as to who is the best of them all as far as nine balls concerned. We have a new referee at the resumption of hostilities. This is Mr. Jorg Klein. now down there inspecting his work and uh, he doesn't seem completely satisfied with it. There seems to be a gap between the one ball and the eight ball. Just as Earl got the other referee broke in, I think uh, this is a shame. Everybody's work was cut out for him at this juncture. Uh, Earl Strickland leaving no stone unturned here to see that see to it that uh, everything is to his satisfaction. I'm going back to the farm. I don't belong. Well, he didn't make a ball on the break. He broke him pretty well. Heffern has an interesting table to tackle here. The, the big problem that comes in this rack is going to be transitioning from the four to the five. The five is near the eight, and the position is going to have to be perfect to allow him to clear up the whole rack of balls. They hit that very smoothly. It was, uh, not an easy shot. He was just a little bit off angle and it required a lot of backspin, but you want to reduce the amount of power that the ball hits the pocket with so that it doesn't rattle and spit out. Three ball in the corner. Yeah, he did achieve the right angle on the four. I know he's dissatisfied with that. And it's going to require quite a shot to get good position on the five now. Where would he want to bring this on, Mark? But it needs to be about in the same place the four ball is now, back to the side of the table. We're going to see a three cushion shot. It appears it has a perfect speed, and uh, I don't think you could have put it anywhere on the table with your hand any better than what he's achieved. Uh, tremendous shot. He used a lot of low left spin to bring the cue ball around the eight so that it didn't bump the eight ball. There's still a little problem to deal with here. He's just slightly off angle on six. I think he's going to come around the table again. Yeah, three cushions. We'll be checking his speed here momentarily. Looks like it's going to be pretty darn good. When you get position like that, everybody feels like they can make all the balls. Mm -hmm. to uh, narrow the gap to just two games. It stands at 19-16 in favor of Strickland. 19-17. Okay, now we got our referee back to work. During the break, uh, we had about a half hour break. And both players didn't waste time uh, sitting around. They just uh, went back to the pool table and uh, 
practice uh, some more shots. Yeah, in all honesty, uh, that's what they're most comfortable with. If they don't, then the uh, crowd tends to engage them in conversation about mm -hmm. the match and kind of distract them, and uh, as well as they can get a chance to work out a few kinks at no cost if they miss, so it mm -hmm. uh, gives them a chance to loosen up their stroke a little bit. <coughs> the atmosphere is absolutely electric here, and uh, it, it, it certainly tells on the player's face. high degree of seriousness. Uh, tremendous break. Tremendous bad luck to get kissed on the side again. That's, a, that's not the that's second time. Bad. He's made three balls on the break and... Uh, Ball for naught. Right. Uh, actually, it's going to even be worse. Uh, it's a nearer for sure win for Strickland and with his dynamic break it could cost two or three games. Something that was completely out of efforts control. He hit the break as well as he could. And this is a little bit of a change of fortune compared to the first half of this match as where Strickland was the recipient of uh, a little of the ill-fated luck. Well, I was talking to Afton during the break and he said uh, he was certainly very disappointed with his uh, turn of uh, fate uh, as far as the break is concerned. What happened there, Mike? Well, we uh, lost our focus a little bit. Uh, I'm, I'm sure he was kind of mumbling in between shots. And, uh, this is uh, not that unusual with him. He, he's a, kind of a temperamental guy, and sometimes uh, even the routine things become hard when he's uh, agitated. Stroke. Well, the crowd here at Richmond is certainly getting a treat from these two players. Right now, it looks like the momentum has swung over to uh, Everett as he has just. Uh, Narrow the gap again to just a one game advantage for Earl Strickland. I would just like to note that so far, uh, all my predictions, including the last rack, that it was going to be a certain win for Earl, none of them have yet come true. So, henceforth, anything that I say, I would like it to mean just the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> well, this, this game, this match has uh, taken a lot of twists and turns and uh, certainly has become very unpredictable. At this point. With that layout of balls in the first segment of the match, uh, Strickland never had a turnover with that type of a layout to where it was uh, somewhat routine. And not that they don't occur, everybody has those. The absolute champions have fewer of those than the rest of us. But, uh, well, even during the uh, break, uh, Mark, uh, we overheard uh, Earl mumbling under his breath. And uh, I uh, can't help thinking that maybe he might be getting affected by what he perceives to be uh, not too perfect conditions. No, that's not it at all. Uh, this is actually pristine conditions to what we generally play under. But uh, I think it's more a byproduct of the pressure out here. Mm -hmm. I think it's actually, uh, he, he may be a little bit under. Well, again, the break has not uh, turned out well for Efren. Uh, he attempted a long, slow curl on the cue ball where he was actually massaying slightly with a little great volume of spin. And while uh, it was an offensive try, he's been rewarded with a little good fortune here in that left effort, an easy offensive opportunity. Here's one of the efforts patented safety plays. He, not only did he move the one ball to a disadvantage, advantageous place, but he also left the cue ball blocked by about four balls. This will require some doing to make a legal contact on the one ball. Let's see what Earl comes up with. I'm definitely not predicting. <laughs> He's made a foul. Is Earl being too fast uh, to his rhythm at this point? No, he, he was uh, left with nothing, but a, a, he had to take a, 
uh, just a poke at it, and uh, that there was nothing more that he could do. No, actually, I shouldn't say that. He could have just accepted it as a foul and maybe tried to tie up some other balls on the table, too, but he, he felt like he had a good enough chance to hit them all. But he's uh, definitely prone to more shot selection mistakes than Efren Reyes will be. It definitely happens a little more calculating. Earl sometimes can make, uh, as we've witnessed in the first half, he can win some games from places that nobody else would even yeah. try to. True. But conversely, sometimes he costs himself some games from where other people would maybe... Uh, would you say that he takes more risks than he should? Oh, I wouldn't say that he should because it naturally fits his style, mm -hmm. and uh, he does very well. You know. But uh, he definitely takes more than uh, Efren does by far, and I'm sure that you've already witnessed some of that. Mm -hmm. amount of power, but the cue ball really didn't respond as well as he would have liked. He's made a nice cut shot. And the cue ball come around there, looked like that's the way he played it perfectly. I didn't have to use a little power on this shot. I can't see from this angle if he's going to choose top or bottom. Well, he's going to have to go left-handed to Magnify the difficulty. He's using bottom. And when you have to swing that hard with your opposite hand, it's very easy to slightly miss hit the cue ball, creating a miscue whereby you miss the shot. So it was a tremendous shot. And the Cleveland Canadian style of Efren Bata Reyes has moved up the competition to an even level again. We're at 19 all. First night is a race to 35. This is a three night affair. The color of money nine ball challenge here at Ridgeway's Bar and Restaurant in Hong Kong. You know, uh, kind of interesting. Uh, Efren was down trailing six racks earlier mm -hmm. in the segment. Mm -hmm. And to lesser skilled players, that would be a near insurmountable lead uh, True. because there's so many uh, shots per game. But with this caliber of play, just one or two shots could mean as many as six games sometimes. And that's the way it's turned out so far. Now, the advantage has swung back to uh, Efren as he has evened up the match at 19 games apiece. The balls are the most interesting to watch is the corner ball, the four ball, which is light as well as the one ball. Yeah. And uh, not to mention the cue ball, and I think we're getting back to that 13% ratio that I had mentioned earlier of uh, amount of scratches on the break that occur. Well, it looks like Efren's getting more than his share of scratches at the point at this point. Yeah, he's had a couple bad kisses. That time it was his fault. He hit the rack a little bit off center, and that's what allowed the cue ball to head toward that side pocket. That side pocket looms quite large on the break because of the volume of power these guys use. The cue ball generally stops them out in the center of the table, mm -hmm. and a slight miss hit propels it right into the side pocket. Tremendous shot. Another tremendous shot. Now, that was much more difficult than it looked. This, this is one of the fortes of Earl Strickland game. It's a slightly elevated cue. This magnifies the difficulty of accuracy, and especially when you couple that with trying to use power. That was a very nice shot. Having to use top spin and go through the seven ball with the cue ball off the seven ball now for the six. Perfect three cushion position. on the eight and yeah, slightly elevated over the nine. Yeah, Jerome Strickland brings it back to his favorite at 20 to 18. 
excuse me, 2019. Just came off the time score at 19 all. I think I better wear my glasses. <laughs> so after 39 racks, there's only one rack separating these two players. With this kind of a long uh, match, Mark, when does mental fatigue or physical fatigue set in? I think it's just now starting to get there. We've played uh, almost the better part of three hours' mm -hmm. play, and uh, I think uh, it'll be interesting to see how these guys hold up to the last half of the match. Now, Everett, I know from uh, all the competition he does, is quite used to playing this long, and I know that Earl practices long enough and exercises well enough that physically he can sustain this, but I don't know that he's been as much uh, lengthy pressure as often. Now, interesting enough, he's never broken through the whole match from this side, to my recollection. And uh, he's trying a new tactic here. Hey, made a ball in the back, but uh, the ball that he was looking to make that time was the three ball. Yeah, the six. Eight. It, yeah, it happened to be the corner ball on that side of the rack that he broke from. break cue back to his playing cue. He's confronted with a difficult situation here. He's going to looks like he's going to play a defensive shot. He's pushing out. Sort of a shot that does uh, Everton have here. Well, I think he's going to try to play safe by putting the cue ball behind the 4-7 right there in the corner pocket and banking the one ball back down the table. He's executed, absolutely. Well, you said uh, earlier, you mentioned it time and again, Mike, that's his forte. And this is really a precarious position to try to make a legal contact on the one. I, I would not say the odds are good. I'm not saying he won't hit it because uh, I haven't been too correct, but this is going to require some doing. He had the mass A out of there, and he made an excellent attempt at that. And you see the cue ball break after it got past the seven ball to, to create an angle enough that he couldn't get to the one. The forehead impeded him from taking a direct route uh, with just one cushion natural angle. Mm -hmm. It just wasn't there. Now there's a fair chance we're going to see a 5-9 combination, uh, depending upon the angle he's able to achieve on the 4 here. If he just follows it straight ahead, I'm nearly certain that we'll see a 5-9 combination. Uh, Efren will play the 4 ball in the corner pocket, bring the cue ball around 3 cushions. And lining up his angle there, he put his finger by the rail where he wants it. The cue ball to hit the rail, and then it will drop off that rail and come in toward the five ball. That's a characteristic of uh, Everton. So sort of marks the line that he wants to take. Yeah, he doesn't actually physically mark it. He just makes a mm -hmm. metal note by placing his finger there, so yeah. that uh, aids him in perfection. Tied up again at 20 all. Each player will try and get 15 more games to round up the evening. First night of a three night affair in this nine ball challenge called Color of Money. $100,000 winner take all deal. Stripling there on the screens. Picture of uh, concentration as he waits his turn. Let's see if Efton Bata Reyes will have more luck this time with the break. 
he doesn't spend any time scrutinizing the rack, mm -hmm. uh, no. does he? No, he gets up here and goes right back to work and uh, content to just take it as it comes, I guess. Oh, he's hit the brake marvelously. And he really deserved better. I guess he did drop a ball on the brake. Yes, he did. Went in so fast I didn't see it or hear it. Neither did I, but he's up again. He's confronted with a pretty tricky situation. He has to go back across the table to the same side that the two balls now on. I played draw. He had a little better angle than I anticipated. Notice the players really try to avoid letting that cue ball get on the cushion. They have to elevate their cue, and that magnifies difficulty as well as control. You have to be pretty accurate when you shot. I think he's going to play the six ball in the side pocket and use a little backspin and just drift the cue ball across the table. He's got it there. Well, he's not happy with that angle, I don't believe. It's not that he's not workable, but uh, you can see he's uh, a little bit off balance. Not going to be nearly as close to the eight as he would have liked. I don't think it's going to present a problem. I oh, hit it very nicely. Dead center on the pocket. Back for the Reyes, takes the upper half. 21 to 20. As Mark Wilson uh, mentioned earlier, at a certain point early in the game, Earl Strickland uh, took a Six game lead, but uh, Efren Reyes now has the edge at 21 to 20. Yeah, while well, Efren doesn't possess the big break, he certainly mm -hmm. uh, possesses all the shot making tools necessary that if he does get a shot, uh, it's uh, usually a loss for your opponent, <laughs> his opponent. We're playing against uh, a player who breaks more powerfully, uh, intimidate a player. Yeah, I think it does, Bobby, and you tend to try to overhit your break and mm -hmm. uh, compensate, and that generally doesn't result in good resu uh, you know, good results from that. Takes you a little out of your game. And so the trick is to be able to recognize that you have to play your own game and not try to get sucked in. Uh, absolutely. And believe it or not, even players of this immense skill sometimes do get a little bit sucked into that. Mm -hmm. uh, they've experienced it, but it's just hard. It's human nature. You want to yeah. kind of be as good as the other guy at everything, or maybe better. Well, I've been kind of happy with this push out because the seven and the eight lined up so that the they could be made. He was attempting to tie those up so that they weren't available to be made. Earl plays a straightaway defensive shot. And while Efren's got some negotiating to do, uh, he handles these situations better than anyone on the face of this planet. Safety. Now he has the ball on the opposite sides of the table and hidden. And uh, in safety play, you want to utilize the rails. When any time that the object ball is on a rail, you've actually cut the pockets in half uh, width-wise. Earl made a tremendous hit, and he may come out of it with a reward here if the six has impeded Efren's attack at the one. And we may see Efren uh, attempt a jump shot here. He must be able to go straight at it. No, he's going to have to curl the cue ball a little bit. Soft spin. Hit it pretty nicely, and uh, 
He's left a pearl cut chat. It looks like a pretty thin cut chat, but it does look makeable. Oh, definitely not an easy shot. Okay, after an attempt at a bank shot on the one ball to bump into the seven ball and pocket the eight. And uh, that's all that he had. So he played straightaway offense. And uh, he's got some separation between the cue ball and the one ball. But I believe Earl has some type of a shot. What a tremendous shot. That's one of the absolute strengths of Strickland's game is those elevated cue shots. So it's just going to have to have plastic surgery. <laughs> well, got a little careless on that position play. He's played good safety on Earl, or on Efren. Weighing up the possibilities. It looks like it's going to be a two real kick at the seven, giving him the best chance to come out of it with a safe or possible making it. Well, it was a very good safety barrel. Two wrecks have transpired here. Mm -hmm. We've had a lot of pool and we have a deadlock score. That's why we've got a lot of pool because there have been no quarters given and none taken in this uh, particular match as expected. I what? would even dare say that we did not expect such uh, an intense match as this. And now you know why all the American players dream of coming over to see mm -hmm. this, because uh, they knew it was going to be loaded with fireworks and a spectacular play. Well, everybody here at Ridge Race is certainly enjoying this. I'm sure uh, Congressman Poppy Pouillet would have wanted to be here uh, tonight, but he's playing again tomorrow. And we're going to regale him with uh, a lot of tales about this opening night. I'm sure he'd be highly amused. He's one of the biggest pool fans uh, oh, yes. that you have. Mm -hmm. And he's certainly uh, been the uh, patron of uh, pool players in the, the Philippines. As, as he has really uh, gone to great lengths to be able to support the sport and the players. I know that uh, Efren thinks highly of him because he always mm -hmm. mentions him whenever he talks about pool in the Philippines. Oh, definitely. Okay, the ball that we're looking to make is Two's on the, the wing ball did go in from that side, which was the two ball. Really wasn't supposed to be on the wing. It's been mutually agreed by both players that the two would be on the very tail end of the rack, every rack. Now the order of the balls actually does make a difference. Um, <clears throat> it's not just purely random where they go and uh, the probabilities of you uh, obtaining a shot from uh, various different placements on the rack 
or higher or lesser, and so it was mutually agreed that it would be the same for both players. Carroll made a tremendous backspin shot. do a uh, half mass A stroke there. Look at that shot making ability. Absolute tremendous shot. Well, there we've witnessed the fine display of shot making. Clarence mm Kiplin -hmm. has earned uh, the moniker uh, Million Dollar Man. You, you want to explain that? No, I'd be glad to. They had an uh, insurance policy at a tournament, and uh, the insurance policy said that no one would run 10 consecutive racks or they would win a million dollars. Mm -hmm. And uh, beforehand, I don't believe it had ever been done in a tournament on a nine-foot regulation table. And right before we came to Hong Kong last time, I sat next to Earl on the airplane, and he assured me that it would never be done. He played pool so many years mm -hmm. that it would never be done. And then he went home from here, and the first tournament he played in, he achieved that. <laughs> and so the million-dollar man, Earl Strickland, Up, he shifted sides. He made the wing ball last time from the other side, but yet he shifted back to his favorite side for that break. What do you think was the purpose in his moving over to the it's, other side uh, earlier? I, I, I truly think this happens to be his side that he feels the most proficient from. And even though he had some success on the other side, he really liked to find a spot on this side of the rack that he's making balls consistently from. He just tends that. I think, well, everybody has a certain little side that they feel more confident with. And he's played a straightaway safety. And this is a much improved aspect of his game. I remember in his youth he used to try for shots that uh, were nigh impossible. Well, if the score right now is indicative of how this whole match is going to play out, this is going to be intense. Oh, yes. And long. And long. <laughs> <laughs> That's only earned the appreciation of the crowd here at Ridgeways. He's eyeing up what he has on the two ball. It doesn't look like he has a direct route to the pocket. Why don't you venture a guess on this one? I'm a little exhausted on my guesses. <laughs> I think we'll just wait and see. Okay. Well, I know if it's a difficult shot, he's going to play a defensive shot. He made a point on the table where he plans to place one of the two balls. Oh, look at this shot. Spectacular. Locked the cue ball behind the eight and moved the two ball down where he pointed his tip on the table beforehand. Again, the position play of uh, Efren Reyes. Earning the nod of the uh, crowd here. I think the route of attack is going to be low right hand spin and down. Yes, in that fashion. And he achieved uh, a solid contact on the ball and made the ball. Now he has the opportunity to make a difficult combination of the nine. You think it's makeable? It's definitely makeable. I just don't know if it's the right shot. It's a very high risk shot. Now he's going to cut the two ball, I believe. What a tremendous shot on the two ball he made. And I do believe that was the right choice.
What a fantastic position shot. When you have to hit a ball that accurate with that much power, it's a supreme difficulty. You would think that a power player such as Earl Strickland would not have the kind of finesse that he's been displaying here. Yeah, there's absolutely no rough edges on either one of these guys talent-wise. Mm -hmm. they're, they're thoroughly polished and they're well-versed in all aspects of the game. Sometimes they elaborate on their strengths. It doesn't mean to diminish the quality of their other aspects yeah, of the game because they're all good. Yeah. Well, the match wouldn't be this close if uh, they weren't that superb in uh, every aspect of the game and uh, certainly uh, everybody watching this including our televiewers uh, certainly appreciate that fact. 